Hi all. Um, so this video is going to continue our histology notes videos. I'm hoping to do all three of the rest of the tissues in, in these notes. Um, so we're going to start with connective tissue. Um, connective tissue is found everywhere. It's uh, with the most abundant and most widely distributed tissue in the entire body. Um, it's involved in um, protecting things, supporting things, and binding things together. That's generally what connective tissue does. Um, common characteristics for connective tissue, um, they have variations in blood, blood supply. So unlike epithelium, where they were all avascular here, some might be avascular, some might be well vascularized, right? So some might get lots of blood, others like ligaments and tendons and cartilage, they might get no blood supply at all. And so um, that also makes them uh, like difficult to heal, right? So um, variations in blood supply, but the big thing is that they're all involved with their um, extracellular matrix, um, which I'm gonna talk about on the next slide. There's lots of variation in connective tissue. The extracellular matrix is probably the biggest thing that um, connective tissues have in common. Um, the extracellular matrix in this case is actually made by the connective tissue cells themselves and then uh, secreted to their exterior, right? Extracellular literally means outside of the cell. Um, there's two main components to the extracellular matrix. The first is ground substance, and the second one is fibers. Ground substance is gonna mostly be water. There are gonna be some adhesion proteins that allow um, the connective tissue cells to attach themselves to the matrix fibers. There's also going to be these large polar polysaccharide molecules, and those are gonna actually like hold in water. Um, so depending on the amount of those, um, if there's very little of those, uh, the connective tissue might be very fluid. Um, a medium amount, it might be gel-like. A lot of them, um, it's holding onto the water and it's not moving around. Um, it can be a pretty firm tissue. So um, differing amounts of that lead to different uh, qualities in the connective tissue. The fibers, again, the type and quantities of those depends on the tissue. Uh, they're all pretty different. Um, there are two main types of fibers in these. There's collagen fibers, which are going to be white with high tensile strength, and then elastic fibers, which are sort of like yellow fibers. They can stretch and recoil, right? Think elastic. Um, the building blocks of those, the monomers of those are created by the cells, excreted into the ground substance, and then they um, join together to build the polymers um, in the extracellular matrix. Um, again, the, these differing variations of the extracellular matrix depends on the tissue. But the extracellular matrix is what allows connective tissues to do various different sorts of jobs, like um, packing, uh, like create a packing tissue around other organs such as fat, to bear weight like bones, to withstand stretching, um, all different sorts of functions. There's lots of different types of connective tissue. I'm not gonna go like in the other tissues, like into each specific one. I do expect you to recognize a couple of connective tissues as being connective tissues. For example, bone, um, uh, cartilage, blood is a connective tissue, um, uh, adipose tissue, which is fat, is so this picture that's sort of covered down here. Um, but all of those are types of connective tissue uh, that again, lots of different functions there. Muscular tissue. Muscular tissues are specialized in general to contract, which produces movement. And they're gonna be three main types of muscular tissue. The first is gonna be skeletal muscle. Obviously, based on the name, it is attached to the skeleton. Um, so when a skeletal muscle contracts, it, pr it pulls on bones or skin, ultimately producing our large movements um, that you think of when you think of movement in, in uh, humans. Um, these can be controlled voluntarily, um, which means that I choose to move my hands, my legs, to create facial expressions, etc. cetera. Um, my brain controls those and I can think to move them and then they move, right? Um, this sort of muscle forms the flesh of our body. It is what forms our muscular system. Uh, the cells are long and cylindrical. Um, long and cylindrical, they're multinucleate. You can see that they have multiple nuclei here and they have um, obvious striations, which are these lines um, through, the, through the cells. Um, when we talk uh, about muscle function in the muscular system, we'll talk about what those striations are. But you should be able to recognize this picture as being of skeletal muscle. 
Cardiac muscle, this word cardiac refers to the heart. Um, cardiac muscle, again, is only found in the heart. It allows your heart to pump blood throughout the body. Um, these cells also have striations. Notice on the drawn diagram and on the slide um, that they have these striations. The darker, different, we'll talk about that. They are uninucleate, means they only have one nucleus per cell. They're relatively short, like this is a single cell here, in comparison to like the long fibers of skeletal muscle. Um, and they have branches. So you can see that in some cases they branch here. Um, they connect really tightly to each other at these uh, connections called intercalated discs. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about that um, when we get to our unit on the heart. Um, this is involuntary. I cannot think to make my heart beat faster or slower. Now, of course, I know as a conscious person that there are things that I can do, like uh, changing my breathing style, et cetera, to make my heart beat faster or slower. But um, I do not personally think my heartbeat. Um, it is an involuntary muscle. Smooth muscle. Um, it is called this because it looks smooth. It has no striations. So notice here, none of those lines that are uh, classic in the skeletal and the cardiac muscle. Um, they have only a single nucleus, just like before uh, the cardiac muscle. They're in these weird, interesting like spindle shapes where they come to these tapered points, um, not uh, these long, uh, long fibers or like intercalated discs anymore. These are going to be found in the walls of like hollow organs, like the stomach and the intestines, and are going to produce the movement in those. Those are also involuntary. I do not think my stomach muscles to move. Um, they move on their own through other signaling um, that goes on. And we talk a lot about the smooth muscle, especially in the digestive system and other systems. Um, when we, when we do those, those um, organ systems in class. So the big difference in muscles are, uh, in terms of looks, are, are whether or not they, they have striations, whether or not they have uh, an, one nucleus or multinuclei, um, and if, if they're voluntary or involuntary. Um, so you should know all of those things about muscle tissue. The last is nervous tissue. This is a pretty simple tissue not actually in terms of function, but in terms of what we're gonna talk about it right now. Again, we're gonna talk more about this when we get to our nervous system. Uh, nervous tissue, basic functions are gonna be receiving and conducting electrical signals um, or electrical impulses from one part of a body to another part of the body. The major cell here are neurons. Here's a diagram and then here are some uh, slides of those. Um, in these, the cytoplasm is actually drawn out into these long uh, extensions. And um, in doing that, a single neuron, depending on, on which neuron it is, can actually conduct an impulse really far over the body, again, depending on which neuron and where it is, et cetera, and its function. Um, but they can do this over long stretches of the body. Um, while neurons are the main cell that we think of, it's more than just neurons in nervous tissue. For example, there are these um, other cells called neuroglia, which are supporting cells um, that help insulate, support, and protect neurons. Um, so there are other, um, other cells that the main one is neurons for nervous tissue. Um, this is just an overall diagram about where you can find, uh, and like just a summary of nervous muscle epithelium and connective tissue.